and welcome guys to another video on Neo FPV and today we are looking at the very new very latest release from TBS and it is the TBS Vent Tracker uh, a similar system to the personal tracker they released um, the race tracker which is a small handheld device which we've not had our hands on ourselves yet which you can use to track your race events uh, one of the problems with this device however it's not really a problem it's more of a feature I guess is that it's only for yourself it is the personal edition it can only manage and track one pilot at a time so what happens if you want to fly with friends well you need to buy another one one for each pilot of course if you do not want to do that then you are well up until this week you were pretty much stuffed so they have released this which is the TBS event tracker it's for um, managing pilots of around 30 to 40 in an event, multiple events, multiple races. It is a complete event management solution. One of the main selling points for this system here is that it is RF based. It is transponderless. As you can see here, it's RF based. There's no uh, timing IR sensor chips there's no transponders to be mounted onto quads it uses the SSID of your VTX channel and as you pass through the gate and over this box it will pick up your signal and within TPS claim within 10 plus minus 10 milliseconds accuracy which I'd say is pretty good and from our testing out in the real world over this last week or so we found it to be pretty reliable and as close to that as we can make out. We've done some basic tests where we've just been walking quads around past the box. We've also done some um, real outside races this week and found that it was as good as anything else that we were using. So it's a great system and it's going to be good to give you guys a good close up review of it. Um, this first video we're mainly going to be looking at what's in the box. I'm not going to unbox it as you can see it's already out in front of you but what we are going to do is talk about each of the components that have been provided by TBS, what they're for, how you'd use them and I'll also give you a little bit of an insight into the extras that I've added into this kit to help me when I take this out. So hopefully that will also be beneficial to anyone that's planning to use this, anyone that's looking at it anyone that's just interested in how it works or anyone that's planning to bring this in as part of their race solution. Okay so we're just going to do a rundown now of the features that TBS have listed on the site and just going over the basic specs. So it, uh, they've said on the site that it's it's good for 30 to 40 pilots or more um, running multiple events or you can run it with smaller um, events with just sort of eight pilots or less but from my experience is is that the system has not been designed with that in mind so you have to do some things to sort of make it work which isn't ideal and those are things that are fed back to the developers at TBS for this for this product. Uh, it's, they claim it takes around about less than five minutes to set up. My experience it has been that it, it, it should take that long in an ideal world but where you've got these large cables to potentially you have to unravel those blah 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 get the batteries plug it all in make sure it works there's a little bit of testing that you'll need to do before you you can race um, so I think you're closer to 10 minutes personally they tell you this it's just a small tiny box that's placed at the gate and that is this box here as you can see it is pretty small it's made of metal so it's quite ruggedized uh, we'll go over the box in more detail soon um, it is waterproof to some extent, so I think they said splash proof, so it will be okay if you get it a little bit wet, but don't run it underwater. All you need to do to set this up is plug pretty much what you see on this table together, and that is what you need, and then you run this long cable back to your time and tent, wherever you're going to have a laptop. Um, it does have Wi-Fi, and my experience of it is the Wi-Fi is not great. Um, I get a lot of disconnections even when I haven't got any 2.4 radios around me I still get a lot of disconnections so I have been running this cabled up using the yellow ethernet cable that is provided um, to give me a nice stable connection using the Wi-Fi pilots can view and look at the times of and, and how the race is progressing that's one of the good features of this of this product but as I've said the Wi-Fi really lets it down um, 
I've spoken to Trappy at TVS and he says that the Wi-Fi aspect of this system is, is good, it's stable, it should work, they, they, they stand by it. I'm still considering replacing the Wi-Fi router for a different one just to see if it helps and makes a difference. This box uses RF, so that's the main thing, is that you don't have to mount transponders onto your quad. There's no handing out handout transponders, making sure pilots have got their own, making sure they're pointing to the left or to the right. All that goes away with this system because this is using your SSID of your VTX. It's going to be using the channel, it's going to be picking that up, and as your quad passes over the box, there's a bubble of there's an RF bubble that's monitoring for those signals, and as you pass through it, that's when your lap time is, is, is marked. This system has been tested over the last two years. It was a product by a company which TBS bought, and they've put some money into it, put their name on it, and they're backing it and going to push for it to, to develop it. Um, it's, now it is a sole TBS owned product. There's no one else that has, the, the, no one owns this just TBS and they took it to uh, the drone worlds in Hawaii last year 2016 and it was tested there it was also tested at the um, the nationals the multi GP nationals in two 2016 they ran it alongside um, the others their, their current system and it was always within 20 milliseconds so it's pretty reliable um, you can run it as I said with as many up to I think it was up to 160 pilots um, in the system. This soft this system will manage your events, so it's automated. You, the idea is, is is that you can press a button and it will walk you through the different um, stages of an event, the qualifiers, you know, the elimination stages, the finals. It's all managed by this box, and you'll get to see that in more detail when we look at the software. One of the other good features about this is that it has live stream capabilities with split time overlays. So it built into this box is a green screen generator. You can go to using a URL, you can point your streaming software to the URL and you can overlay live data, lap times, pilot times and race position all over whatever you want. So you can do that for individual pilots if you want to show their video feeds and put their lap times over the top. And if you get an extra box, you can buy another one of these called a split time, split time tracker. And that will allow you to get extra times throughout the laps, mid lap, and also display that on the live stream as well. Okay, so looking at what you get in the box, the package contents, you obviously get the TBS event tracker. You get a Wi-Fi router, Ethernet switch, a wall socket cable, which is um, EU. The USA, um, I don't remember seeing an adapter included for that, um, but I've got a different cable I'm using. Um, you've got the adapter for power cable for the switch. You get one very, very long, here it is, 50 meter Ethernet cable. You get a shorter one as well. And also, this one here, which is a three meter. So I'm not sure whether this yellow one was included by mistake, um, but it's in there anyway. Um, and I've used that over the smaller flat one. The weight of the box is around 460 grams. It's 180 millimeters by 120 millimeters in dimensions. It's water tolerant. That's what they say. It, as I said, 20 milliseconds accuracy. It can be AC powered. Looking on the back there, just uses the clover leaf style connector, or it can be powered using uh, LiPo batteries. It will take two to six S DC power. And one of the good things about this is, is that these are these are actually redundant. So you can plug one battery in, or you can plug two batteries in, and it will function just fine. You can unplug one battery and leave one bug battery plugged in, and it will not power down. And so you can hot swap those LiPo batteries without in interfering in a race, which is really, really handy. Obviously, if you're indoors and you've got power, you can use the, the uh, AC power on the back. Let's have a look now at this. This is a tender. That's who makes it nicely rebranded by TBS with their sticker, so I thought I'd follow suit. Um, it's a four-port switch, uh, th sorry, a three-port switch. Has um, 
three ports here which you can use for the equipment you have here and then you've got a WAN port there if you wanted to use um, connect this up to the internet which is good for the multi GP feature so you can upload your track times directly to multi GP if you have an internet enabled uh, if you've enabled your Wi-Fi router and given it internet access they also provide you with this it's just a USB to Ethernet adapter um, on my Windows 10 laptop it worked without any drivers which was really handy just plug and play um, and that's good for anyone that's not got an ethernet port built into their laptop that they plan to use i'm using the surface pro 4 because it's a small light touch screen have it's removable keyboard but yes it doesn't have an, an ethernet port so this was very handy and it saves me having to carry around the dock um, and that's about it oh uh, you get a lipo cable um, so if you're indoors and you want to use the standard one for the switch you can if you want to use lipo powered which we will be both indoor and outdoors then you need to use a 3s must be a 3s battery lipo battery for the switch to work any more than that you risk blowing it up so that's what you get in the box you've also got this rather short but sweet version one manual this was only written about a week or so ago by trappy and florian um, it goes through the first steps, preparing for your first event, how to get the players on, timing your first race, how the RSS stuff works, um, trial rounds, controlling the race, providing re results to pilots, and tracker maintenance, and then some passwords and usernames. Um, and, that's, and that's what you get. Okay, so for the next part of the video, I want to show you how this stuff all plugs together, what bits what, the extra bits that I've taken with me when I go out, uh, why I've taken them, how it all plugs together, what hole to plug what into, and just how quickly really you can get this set up. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the event tracker itself. I've got this box. It came, as you can see, SkyZone box. It came with my SkyZone goggles. And I use this because it just helps keep it out of the dust, stops um, any dust getting sucked into these fans it also keeps it out, out of any damp grass and it also acts as a bit of protection so I can flip the lid over don't have to zip it up but I can, so I can still plug stuff in but it means if anyone crashes into the start line um, this is a little bit protected worth mentioning you break it TBS will replace it so while it's not an issue if it gets broken you've got the time issue of getting it replaced so I'm just going to try my best to keep this in as good condition as I possibly can which is why this box is really helpful obviously for the purpose of this I'm not going to use the box Put that over there so obviously I've got my laptop here this is also a requirement you can do it from your phone but I wouldn't recommend it the UI is not mobile responsive it doesn't scale well on small devices uh, it's, it would just be an absolute nightmare pain to try and administer this system using a mobile phone. So I've got my Surface Pro 4. I like the form factor. It's nice and small, light. Uh, it has a detachable keyboard. It's touchscreen. Has a decent battery. Um, and apart from that, I'm really, I'm, you know, it's a it's a really good machine for this purpose. But obviously, you can use any machine, any laptop. All you need is a web browser. I recommend using Chrome. Um, and as long as you've got a web browser, you should be good. So let's let's get this plugged up. So first of all, first first thing to mention is I'm not using I haven't got a 3S battery with me. So I am going to be powering the Wi-Fi router using uh, mains power. So just taking the mains power lead and we just plug that into there. Wait for the lights to come on. That's it booting up there. Once, once the system lights on, there we go, and it flashes there, you know it's ready. Always wait for that to come up first, because that's what's going to be dishing out the IP addresses, and that's what this is going to be connecting to, and it just makes things work a little bit better if you make sure that the central part of the system is working correctly. So, next thing to do is to plug your event tracker box into your router so are you I plug it into port one doesn't actually matter but just put one one end into the ethernet port 
like so. And one end into the router. I'm not expecting any lights on the router yet because obviously the event track is still powered off. Next thing to do is plug your laptop into the, the router. So I'm going to be using this because this doesn't have any Ethernet ports. Um, if you don't have any Ethernet ports, you could use um, a dock, like my dock here has one. That's all this is, by the way. It's just a dock powering the powering the surface. Or you can use the included USB. So USB Ethernet now I'm plugged in. Now I've uh, sorted out that dodgy connection. Um, we just want to plug one end into that. Cool, so we have all our lights flashing on that we should have. The last thing to power up is the event tracker. Don't expect to hear much because it's pretty quiet. As long as the fans are spinning at the back, and you might be able to just about see some LEDs flashing inside. You know she's good to go. You'll also get some LEDs on the front just showing that you've got network activity and then you should have when it's working three solid lights and one flashing light which is the system light okay so that's it all plugged up um, as you can see there's not an awful lot to it you plug the event tracker into the router you plug your laptop into the router you power the two things on do it in the order that I've done for best results it shouldn't matter you should just be able to plug it all in, turn it all on in any order and it will just work. Once you know it's working, have a look and you should see uh, a Wi-Fi network available called TBS Event Tracker. Um, you can connect to that and you should be able to see um, the Event Tracker box. You should also be able to see any results on your phone. Your Ethernet, if you plugged in via Ethernet, you should, you should get an IP address automatically from the route and the switch and you're good to go. So the Event Tracker is on a static IP address and the IP address is listed um, here. It's 192.168.1.169 colon 8080 forward slash admin dot htm and the username is tracker and the password is simple tracker. So I'm just going to type that in now and get it up onto the, the main screen. And there we go. So that is it all set up and working. Let's see if I can zoom in. There. Um, this 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 says login. There's a little logo up the top there. Um, if you click login, you get a login prompt. Um, and that's all I'm going to go go into today with this setup because you're not going to make out anything on the screen that I show you from this at the moment and as you can see even that is quite hard to make out so I'll, I'll use some screen capture software for that just to give you um, a clearer image of what's on screen <laughs> 